Wonderful. So it's been about... Oh, sorry, should I go? <laughs> Action. <laughs> and welcome to another year of Jake Bakes. Thank you guys so much for joining us last year. I had so much fun and I want to have that fun again this year. So I've got a really special recipe today. It does take some time, but when the weather's nasty outside, we have fun in the kitchen. So it's gonna be sausage rolls with homemade puff pastry. And this puff pastry does take a little technique, but it is fabulous when it's done right. And I have a special friend that's going to join me to sort of set this off with his own special uh, mixture for the sausage. I cannot wait to get with you in the kitchen and get this started. So let's begin. Now, to get it started, we're just going to use a few simple ingredients in your cabinet. The basis of this is just flour, salt, water, eggs. Super simple. So we're going to use basically two to one ratio of bread flour to all-purpose flour. I find that bread flour gives it a little bit more structure and helps it to rise without getting a little bit wonky. So we're going to use a cup and three quarters of bread flour into the bowl. And then three quarter cup of all-purpose flour. And then to that, we're going to add 100 milliliters of water, cold water, because we want to chill this before we're going to roll this out and laminate it and all that stuff. So we want our ingredients as cold as possible to cut down on that cooling time. So water goes into the bowl. And now two large eggs. One and two. Wipe your hands off. That's what an apron is for, and it is wonderful. And then a good hefty pinch of salt. Salt makes everything taste better, especially breads. You can always tell when a bread's been undersalted. So, setting those aside, you're just going to mix this up. Break up the eggs. You can whisk the eggs beforehand. I oftentimes do that just so that I don't get any weird streaks of egg, but it's honestly not too big of a deal. And you're gonna mix this until you get a really shaggy dough. This dough will be a little bit stiffer in the beginning because we're gonna to need to knead this just a little bit to build up that gluten and to make sure that everything is mixed up. All right, now that we've got it basically to this really shaggy, there's still flour showing, there's still some liquid, and it's basically like this. There's not a whole lot of gluten built up yet, and that's okay. I wanna mix this around the bowl to pick up all the extra flour. And then we're gonna start kneading this after we flour our board. So I'm gonna grab some more flour. And because it's a little bit wetter of a dough too, like as much as it is a little stiff, it's really, really wet. So you just wanna knead through that initial wet stage. I think my first mistakes in bread were making my doughs too dry. So you won't get a good enough rise. You won't get a good enough anything. So you wanna work with dough probably wetter than you think it's gonna be. We're just gonna need this for about five minutes, just until it starts to become silky smooth. All right, this looks really good. See how it's much more smooth. We went from that really sort of uh, monster hand to this silkiness, which is exactly what we want. Um, and now we need to chill this for at least an hour. We want all of our ingredients to be very cold because what we're going to be doing is laminating this dough well, technically we're laminating the butter, um, but we wanna get those, those layers, and to do so, we need to laminate this, which means we're going to roll this out, um, put a big slab of butter in there, which is my personal favorite, look at me, butter. And then we're going to fold it up, and it's gonna create lots of little tiny layers of butter, which will just puff up, basically the, the fat melts, and the water then melts, or the water then vaporizes, produces steam, which causes all of it to puff up, hence, you got it, puff pastry. So yeah, we wanna do that, but we wanna get this cold. So I'm gonna roll this into a little ball, 
put this in a Ziploc bag, let it chill in the refrigerator for about an hour or two. Honestly, you can leave it up to about eight hours. You just want it to be very cold. So as soon as it becomes really cold, you're good to go. Now we come to my very favorite part of any laminated dough, and that is making this big slab of butter that's gonna be you know, layered in between everything. For this, I really recommend using European butter. Why the difference or what is the difference? European butter starts with a butter fat percentage at 82% or higher, with a lot of them ranging right around 85%. Um, and then American butter or US butter is made with 80%, with a lot of them ranging right at 81% butter. Also, European butter is cultured, so it has extra cultures that are added into it. Think of kind of like yogurt, but it does not taste like yogurt. It has a fermentation process that allows more natural flavors to come out, and you get this really wonderful depth of flavor. Whereas American butter is sweet cream and is not cultured, so it doesn't have that uh, depth of flavor, which is more desirable in something that has, you know, a half a pound to a pound of butter. That's one of the, going to be one of our main ingredients, so we want it to be absolutely wonderful. Now to get this started, I'm using a bench scraper and you can always use something like a butcher's knife or any large knife that you have lying around the house. Go ahead and use that. We wanna cut this into three sections because we're gonna lay them right next to each other like one, two, three, and then roll them out in between uh, pieces of parchment paper so we can get that really thin. So I'm gonna just do this. I always end up messing this up. Let's go this way. There we go. And cold butter for this is the best because it will stick. So we got one, and I'm gonna split this last one in half. You might also look at using um, Irish butter. I'm using Plugra, which is an American made butter, but it's in European style. So it does have that higher butter fat percentage. Another one that I see a lot in um, just every bit of grocery stores are Kerrygold, which is an Irish butter. I find it to be a little bit more stiff. Um, it's harder to roll out, but it is still a very fabulous flavor. So I have my little bit of butter and now I wanna roll this out. So I'm gonna put another piece of parchment paper over that, and I'm gonna grab my rolling pin. And for this, you have to make some noise. Take out your aggressions. Whoo, I got a lot of them, okay. Just wanna pound the out. You wanna pound this out until you get a really nice thin slab. And it works best, like I said, if you have that cold butter because if you have warm butter, it's just gonna go everywhere. So, cold butter is the best butter. All right. Okay. You want it rolled out to probably about a quarter of an inch. Um, that should help you keep those layers really nice and thin. And what I do is after I have it like this, I want this to be pretty much perfectly square. So when I have it like this, I like to go in here and square it off some. So I take my bench scraper again and get it pretty much as square as possible. And we'll just add this in where I think that I can make a more of a rectangle with. This helps a lot because precision in this is really important. Um, you don't want like a piece of your puff pastry to not have butter or some to have too much butter because it's gonna leak out and look greasy and not as pretty. Flip that the wrong side. So I'm just gonna give this one final roll. It doesn't need to be perfect, but you do want it as, as sort of, um, flat and rectangular as possible. So there we have it. And I want to get this in the fridge to actually get really cold because we don't want it to melt into the dough. And I think our dough should be about ready to come out and start our lamination process. Our ingredients are now very well chilled. This is lovely. Um, and now we need to roll this dough out so we can put the butter plaque on. So I'm gonna get this out. 
Ooh, it's sticky. There we go. Toss this behind me. And now, put some flour on the board. And this one, because it's a little bit of, of a wetter dough, I find that it's okay. Like, I'm not afraid to overwork it or add too much flour because it's a wetter dough, so it's okay to do that. Now, I got my rolling pin. And we're gonna roll this out to a fairly large size. Remember how big we did the butter plaque? We want that to be the two-third mark of the one whole dough because we're gonna fold that over. Just keep turning it over. It is a little gonna be stiffer, and that's okay. I always like rolling out dough. It's cathartic. Look at how pretty and nice that is. Okay. And then once we get it to a manageable place, I go in and actually sort of try to make it as square as possible so that when we go to add the butter, it's pretty much lined up with it. Let's see how big this is right now. I need to get a little bit longer. And a trick that I know to get it, see how it's pulling back a little bit? The trick I do to sort of get that to stop, because that gluten's trying to retract, it's not as relaxed as it was. Roll it and hold it there for a second before you release that. That'll help it to have something to hold onto as you're stretching that gluten out. Because you don't want to tear gluten, that's going to ruin it. You want to gently pull it out. Alrighty. Get this squared off and I think we'll be ready to go. Okay. Peel this off. So I'm gonna put this butter slab on the bottom two thirds. Once that on, that's on. And you want it to go all the way to the edges because you want that butter to be perfectly with everything in there. You don't want it like a, a spot of no butter in your dough because that's just not fun. Everybody wants butter. Everybody wants to be in the butter bark. Alrighty. My dough's retracted some, so I want to pull this out just a little bit more. Then I'm going to fold. This is what's called a fold. We're going to get ready to do this. You're going to fold the first third down over this. Second third. Sort of pinch that together and sort of seal that butter in. Then take this bottom third, fold it over. So you have a little bit of a little butter sandwich. It's all butters in there. You wanna make sure that all of it gets in too so you can seal it really nicely. I just go through and pinch it down on the sides, make sure everything looks good. Alrighty. And now, oh, got a little air trapped in there. That's okay. So now, once we have this done, just like this, we need to let it chill again because we don't want that butter to melt. So we need to let this chill in the fridge for probably another hour. So grab a cup of cocoa, relax, get this in there for an hour, and then we're gonna roll it out again. I'm gonna show you another version of folding. All right, our dough is good and has been sitting for a while. You can feel the plaque of butter pretty stiff in there. Like if I hold it, it's gonna not completely collapse like it would. I'm gonna wanna flour the board first so that it's not going to stick. So flour everywhere. Isn't there a song like flowers in spring or something? Okay, so, oh yeah, it's the Mikado, the flowers that bloom in the spring. There it is, I knew. Okay, now we want to fold this into quarters. I'm gonna do what's called a book fold. Whereas in the first rollout, we did it in thirds. We're gonna do this one in fourths. You can see a little bit of the specks of butter, which is cool. I'm gonna turn this just a little bit, to get it a little bit wider. You hear that's just the popping of the air bubbles that are in there, so that's okay. 
And you want to make this as well as square as possible. So get this, pull this out a little bit. It's always fun making these because you can feel it firm up as you go. And as it gets colder and colder, it gets stiffer and stiffer. So to do this, we want to go ahead and fold down the first quarter. First quarter down. And the bottom quarter into the middle quarter. And they should meet up like this. Then we're going to fold them together like a book. And if you haven't guessed yet, this is what's considered a book fold, where it has two layers like that, opens up like a book. We want to do this once. We're going to put this in the fridge and we're going to do it again. And then we'll be ready to do sausages. So when you get back, we're going to put all of it together, get all the sausage stuffed in there, and it's going to be delicious. Now that our pastry has been resting overnight, I wanted to get it really cold so that those layers are really well defined. I'm gonna roll this out, but I wanted to bring my friend Kenny on. He's a culinary student out in Rhode Island at Johnson & Wales, a really, really fabulous culinary school. Um, he's gonna be making the sausage for our sausage rolls. So we needed, um, you know, I have the pastry done. He is gonna be our meat guy today because he does really wonderful things. He's worked at a, meat depart a few meat departments and is one of the most knowledgeable people I know about meats. So Kenny, what did you bring us today? Well, I brought to you today uh, some ground pork. It is from a uh, pork shoulder. I actually got a boneless pork shoulder and asked uh, the meat department guy to grind it up for me because they only had like a 90% and I needed a fattier one. Can you do that like at any grocery store? Um, pretty much. Uh, most grocery stores will allow you to um, and, ask for it. And that you got it because you needed more fat in it? Yeah, I needed more fat to make sausage. You need a lot of fat content in it. Oh, I did not know that. Yep. Um, what are we, what are you seasoning it with? Uh, today I'm seasoning it with uh, some Italian spices. Uh, we're going to do a hot Italian sausage, Oof. which is one of my favorites. It has I'm, really yeah, good flavor to it. I like it. the heat. Um, so we we're using like coriander and fennel seed. Caraway, which um, is probably caraway. one of my favorites. Caraway is really good. Uh, and so is, uh, I love red pepper flakes in my sausage. I put so. them in like literally everything. Yep. I'm just like, pepper flakes. Definitely. Awesome. So I see you've got some mixed up already. Yes, I do, actually. It oh actually smells God. really good. Oh my God. Oh, that, I can, that nutmeg. Yep. That brings out a really, really good, good smell in that. Yep. You want to go ahead and mix that up for me as we yes. get that going? That's kind of a running joke on this whole <laughs> channel is just not being able to keep anything yeah. anywhere. Yeah, yeah. I know a thing. friend that can't keep things in glasses. You know what? I do know him too. I had him on here once and he couldn't keep the egg in the glass either, so. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> so yeah, awesome. we're just gonna mix it up. Don't be afraid to over mix. Yeah, because that's something that I've heard is like with meatballs, you can over mix them, but I think that's because it has a binder? Right. Okay, so this is good. I mean, obviously, I, I work in doughs and pastries, so I'm always worried of overmixing, especially like pie crust. I but... don't have the patience for that. Well, you learn. <laughs> <laughs> I did not have the patience when I started out, which is why I made terrible, terrible bread. It but was a lot of work. That looks so good. So we're missing a little seasoning, which is I oh, guess it's okay. not too too much. And you said this is two and a half pounds? Yeah, about awesome. that. Okay. Yeah. It was two and a half when he grinded it. Sometimes they don't get a lot out of the grinder because the grinders are really huge. Oh. So we're probably maybe looking about two and a quarter. Okay. Does that include the bone, actually? No. Okay. No bone. I didn't know that. Learning new yes. things. All right. Okay, so while you're finishing that, I'm going to go ahead and roll our puff pastry. And remember, when you're working with pork, you really want to make sure that you're not cross-contaminating everything. You want to wash your hands, make sure that you're not going to um, get the pork on this or on your counter and then touch, you know, anything else in your house. You want to make sure that you're keeping everything clean. So that's especially important when you're working with raw, raw meat, especially pork. So we're going to get this rolled out pretty thin. Okay, so we have it pretty good and thin. We want to cut this into six equal portions. It's I not, can't wait for this. I'm super stoked. So. The nice thing about getting a bench scraper is if you can find one with measurements on them, perfect. I need because that one. I, I love this. I got this at like Sir La Table. It was like super cheap. Um, especially when I'm doing pastry, I needed things to be pretty precise. So 
Let's see, we got six, 12, and five, 17. Is that how I'm count? really bad at math, Me I'm too. sorry. <sighs> okay, so we're gonna do this in thirds. Let's see, we'll do this here. And you wanna cut pastry, you don't wanna rip it. Because if you rip pastry, you're gonna end up ripping the gluten that's formed, and that's not gonna be good for anybody. So we've got it in thirds, and then we're gonna cut this in half. This is more like squares than rectangles. Alrighty, do you wanna make up some little sausage logs? Yeah, how big do you want them to be? Um, so we're gonna put them in like this, and then wrap them up. So we don't want them too, too big. About, about like that big, does that make sense? Like yeah, bratwurst go. size. Is bratwurst size a culinary term? No. Damn it. Okay. I'm really sorry. <sighs> okay. Awesome. So I'm gonna do this. That's actually really good. Yeah, that's actually perfect. So like a like it's like a big finger. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> we got one done. While you're finishing up this, I'm gonna go get the egg wash so that we can seal these up and get these baked off in an oven. Okay. So you can see how I'm rolling them up. Yep. They're nice and delicious. You've made really great sausages. Um, I'm just gonna put some egg wash right at the edge of this so we can seal them up. I'm gonna put one here. You're gonna do the one I just touched. I'm gonna have you roll it up. So go ahead and grab that one. I'm gonna take this and just roll it up like a little taco. That egg wash will seal it all in so you don't have to do anything too much. Yeah, you can go ahead and put that on the tray if you want. I'm gonna finish these up here. You wanna put them apart, uh, put them on there about an inch and a half to two inches apart. You can use a pastry brush. I have a pastry brush. I don't know what I did with it. These are but freaking huge. I know. But they're gonna make a good dinner and it's- No, it's, I, can't, I can't wait. So, I'm gonna do one more here. You can put those vertical. Do you use like, do you dip these in anything or? I'm, we're gonna brush these with an egg wash and mm. then score them so that they get really pretty. So I'm gonna actually use this bad boy right here and brush this with an egg wash. These will help, this will help make it like really nice and golden puffy. I don't know why I'm telling you that, Mr. Culinary. These would be really good with like uh, English mustard. Ooh, yeah. See, I was thinking too, like you could do different styles, like um, like andouille sausage with like a, a red cabbage in there for Mardi Gras or a country sausage and then glaze these with like real maple syrup. Andouille is actually my favorite. I love andouille. And that's so perfect for like St. Louis. St. Louis' sister city is New Orleans. Right. And so we get tons of really delicious soul food here in Creole. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the sink for me. Now I'm gonna score the first one and then would you mind scoring the others? Sure. So we're gonna go ahead and score these. Lots of little scores. About like that. So I did two, four, six. Did you know if you go on the back of the knife you can create some designs? What do you mean? Like if you use the back of the knife you can actually do designs on it. Oh, cool. I did not know that. Yeah, if you don't have to cut into it. So this is gonna help to uh, get the heat into the actual sausage to help it cook. Cause we're gonna cook these in a 390 degree preheated oven for about 20 to 30 minutes until they turn golden brown and just have puffed up to deliciousness. Mm. Awesome. So we're gonna go ahead and get these in the oven. I cannot wait for these to Me neither. Uh, come They're out. gonna be really good. Wonderful. Can you smell that? It smells really, really good. I am good. so I'm stoked. actually really hungry too. Um, well, perfect. You're just in time. These have been in for about a half hour, and they are oh, golden wow. delicious. Ooh, one exploded, but we're okay. Golden brown. These are gorgeous. Let me go ahead and plate these bad boys up. Oh, do you hear how crispy that is? Yeah, it's really good. See how much they've puffed too? God, this looks so good. Oh, they're so big. 
Yeah, well, that's what's nice, too, is that these can be something you share with someone. In fact, you want to share sure, one with I'm me? I'm not sharing. Ah, oh, dang it. Okay. Uh, you know what? It's a long shot. These look delicious. So let me get this pan of grease out of here. Oh, my God. I am so ready for this. Okay. I'll let you choose because you've been a really wonderful guest. Go oh, ahead and choose you. yours. Oh, whew, God. Choices. I'm gonna do, I'll do this little fat one. <laughs> Listen to that. It actually is. A good That's like, that is the sound of good puff pastry. You actually see the flakes. Yeah. Look at that. Ah! <laughs> I get so excited every time I do puff pastry because it's so good. Oh my gosh, it's so delicious. Look at that. That right there is just stupidly flaky, stupidly gorgeous, and stupidly easy. As long as you got the time. But you do, and I know you do. You're a dork. I know, but that's what people love me for. <laughs> oh, I can I use the knife? Sausage I want to get some. Sure. Oh, you have some sauces. Yeah, so I made a quick beer cheese um, with some shallots, a clove of garlic, sharp cheddar, and a honey wheat ale. I'm super excited. And then I made a honey ginger mustard. Which one are you trying? I'm gonna try the mustard. The I'm gonna try the cheese because I like cheese. Okay. Oh my god, that smells so good. Mmm. Mm mm mm. Oh no. Whatever. Get in my oh, mouth. Oh, the sausage is really good. Oh my god. Mm hmm. That was so good. Yeah, I like it a lot. We kind of killed it. I could use a little bit more red pepper flakes, but... But hey, I could also really roll good. these a little bit better, but... You learn. Oh my god, that cheese. I know. Mm, mm. That mustard has just enough ginger in it to like bring out the sweetness. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I like the mustard a lot, but that cheese dip is really good. I'm, I love cheese, no matter what. It's, it's really easy to put together, too. Like, cheese literally really five minutes and be done. Well, thank you so much for being here. Kenny, do I have flakes in my beard? No, you're good. I guess it's puff pastry is dangerous for really that. Good. But thank you so much for being here. I appreciate all of your culinary expertise. This sausage is so good. And it was so easy, too. Thanks. It was actually, I like it a lot. So anytime you're in town, please feel free to come join us on the set. I really appreciated it. I will And if you guys really liked this episode, please like, share, and subscribe with all of your friends. Because these sausage rolls, like this video, gotta share them. Or you can hoard them to yourselves like I'm about to go do. Sorry, Kenny. All right. Well, you'll see you here next time, guys, on Jake Bakes. You stole my line. I know. Like I'm about to steal your sausage roll. Rude. <laughs> Are you still filming? <laughs> Why are you filming? <laughs>